In a previous video, we derived potential vorticity equation, uh, which is shown here, PV equals minus G times the quantity zeta theta plus F times d theta dp. So this equation really is the multiplication or the product of two things. Absolute vorticity, zeta theta plus f, times the static stability, which is the combination here of minus g d theta dp. And so what we found was that this uh, equals a constant under certain conditions. Those conditions are when the atmosphere is both adiabatic and frictionless. And so this suggests that a parcel exchanges stratification or stability for circulation and vice versa, but that under these conditions of being adiabatic and frictionless, the total value of PV will remain unchanged, unless, of course, the flow is not adiabatic. And so this is the essence of what we call PV thinking. PV thinking's two primary characteristics are, one, that PV is conserved for adiabatic frictionless flows, which is generally true in the upper parts of the atmosphere, and that two, PV is invertible. What does it mean to be invertible? Uh, we will get to this in just a little bit. But in essence, it means we can extract information from PV that may not otherwise seem uh, that it's there uh, right on the surface. But let's begin with this idea of PV being conservative. This goes back to Rossby in 1940, who showed that this uh, was the case, that PV is conserved under these stringent conditions. And so the only time that PV can change then when it is conserved is when it is advected. And so we're going to talk a little bit about PV advection when we start talking about the life cycle of our mid-latitude cyclones from this PV perspective. We know that the atmosphere, though, is not always adiabatic. And so we can, in fact, get some changes to PV, uh, not only due to advection, uh, but then when there's diabatic heating or cooling or frictional dissipa dissipation and generation. We will talk about the diabetic effects on PV in a later video. But let's spend most of our time talking about this invertibility principle related to PV. And so let's think a little bit about what is all contained within our PV equation. We have vorticity, absolute vorticity at that, as well as the static stability. And so what are the things that are proceed from this distribution? If we begin by thinking about the vorticity, vorticity, even in an isentropic sense, our relative vorticity, zeta theta, is dv dx minus du dy on a given theta surface. And so really, we have knowledge here of both the u and v components of the wind. In addition, static stability is our minus 1 over g d theta dp. Well, d theta dp here, we could then get information about, for example, geopotential height. And so from this information, we could get information about the ageotrophic nature of the wind. And so our between our vorticity and our static stability, we really have all of the information we need about the atmosphere described in this single quantity. But in order to actually retrieve these pieces of information, like the U and V components of the wind and the geopotential height, we would need appropriate boundary conditions to do so.
And so there are three things that we need in order to invert PV and get out these base state variables. And so um, to gain knowledge of our flow from PV, we can invert PV. But we'll need three things. One, we will need knowledge of the PV distribution. Basically, we're going to need the PV on some isentropic surface or on some uh, pressure surface uh, in order to start. Basically, we need the PV distribution to begin with. Two, we're going to need knowledge of some boundary conditions or BCs. These boundary conditions are going to allow us to solve a unique problem. Essentially, what we're getting here is a partial differential equation going on. So for all those who took PDE, yes, we're thinking that way. And then three, though, in order to really close our whole equation and be able to truly invert it, we're going to need a balance condition that will relate our mass and wind fields. So what is a balance condition that relates our mass and wind field? The most basic one uh, is geostrophic balance. Remember that in that balance equation, we're basically seeing a balance between our components or our wind field and the mass field in terms of our geopotential height. So we need some sort of balance condition. Now if we used geostrophic balance, that would not actually serve too much of a purpose because we know that geostrophic balance does not uh, reign true across our entire atmosphere. But we could use, for example, gradient wind balance or a form of the gradient wind balance as our uh, balance condition coupled with some appropriate boundary conditions and the knowledge of the PV distribution to then back out all of the components. And so if we know our PV distribution and we use an appropriate balance condition, such as gradient wind balance in the upper parts of the atmosphere, plus our boundary conditions, then it is possible to go from our PV distribution to phi u v t omega, our vertical wind, and our stability within the domain. And so truly, from our initial PV distribution, we know everything about the atmosphere. That's why in the initial early numerical weather prediction that Rossby came up with, we basically were using PV as that uh, forecastability. But what we're really going to need to do to really utilize this, well, this is great, this PV invertibility, this is not a simple task to do, and we will not be doing it in this class, but it can be done. What we want to do, though, is think more about how can we use knowledge of the PV at any given point in time to understand the structure of the atmosphere. And so in a future video, we're going to talk about PV anomalies. PV anomalies are going to tell us a lot about uh, how we can use PV in a synoptic setting to understand atmospheric flows.